Are there advantages to aging? Yes, I am Debbie Jo Horton and welcome to Advantages to Aging. Join my guests and I as we discuss aging and what makes for a healthy lifestyle, which results in a quality life. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome listeners. Welcome back to another episode of Advantages to Aging. And there are times when I do a consultation prior to taping where the time goes by so fast and you know you could easily chat for several hours afterwards. And that is what happened with my guest today, Susan Mazur. The time went by so fast. We had so much to talk about. And so hopefully you'll get a little snippet of that today and want more. So Susan is uh, the co-founder and former CEO of a healing healthcare system. She's also an author and a musician. But today we're going to talk about what it is to age and why even in your 70s, you should be looking to develop yourself. So welcome, Susan. Oh, thanks, Debbie. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we are very happy to have you. So we're going to dive right into it because we like to keep these short and sweet so our listeners can be on with their day. We talked a lot about aging, really kind of being like a developmental change. So what is it about growing older at 11? versus growing older at, say, I don't know, 50, 60, 70, or even 80? So it's very interesting because when I turned 11, on my 11th birthday, we moved into a new house. My parents had just bought a house, and that was very exciting. And I also had to change schools. So here I was, the second half of the sixth grade, and I grew up in Detroit, and so the seventh grade, you went to middle school. So it was the last half of the semester where everyone else knew each other, except I knew no one. Mm. And it was a pretty brutal time for me. I got teased a lot. I got harassed. And I had no clue as to who I was or what my identity as a person at 11. I just wanted to do good. I was really like a straight A student and the goodies came to me when my parents patted me on the head and said, great. But after that, it was really a search for me to figure out who am I and what defines me, which didn't really happen until I was 14 and started playing the harp. And by that time I was in high school and I was still a good student, but the harp really took me. And to this day, 61 years later, I'm still playing. And my career really was like a river that meandered from classical to jazz to full time for 25 years and then moving into healthcare. But all of it surrounded music. So now I'm 75 and I have more road behind me. My rear view mirror is very full, where at 11, it was very short. Right. So I had no personal resources or experiences to really help me answer all those existential questions other than to be reactive, which I think is what most 11-year-olds are, is reactive to what's going around them. So now at 75, the challenge is not the same, but in some ways it is, because remember at 11... I was beginning puberty. I had just gotten my period. Um, I wasn't wearing a bra yet, but that was going to come soon. And so all these physical changes, how do I dress? Who am I? Who are my peers? And, um, and now at 75, I go through physical changes, but I have many more resources to really help me figure out a path, and also how seriously I should take all the changes. Mm -hmm. At 11, every change is a change in identity. But at 75, I have an understanding of what to expect. Um, 
I can either be miserable about it or make fun of it or laugh about it. And humor is really critical as we get older. Um, and, and my career at this point um, is again going through a change in terms of how do I stay relevant? How relevant do I need to be? We don't have children, which of course is a very different way of aging. But I think that for each of us, the idea of remaining relevant to the world we're in, continuing to expand our worldview and respond to the world as it is around us, which requires that we look beyond our own house, that we look beyond our television, beyond just keep reaching into places that we may not be familiar with. So travel really helps with that. My husband and I travel a great deal. I am a continual learner. I continue to write and I am uh, continue to write a blog. I continue to look at publishing, but it's not as difficult because I don't have the pressures that I had when I was younger. I don't have the pressures of hired, fired, um, running a company, dealing with taxes in for the company, dealing with conflicts within the company. That, while a very rich part of my life, I'm very happy to not have that stress. Yeah, the stress can definitely be very different. Although I would have to say that the stress that, that you and I felt at 11 is very different from the stress that today's 11 year old faces. Unfortunately, I think their stresses are much greater than ours are. Have you thought completely about your retirement plan? No, I'm not really talking about the financial end of it. I'm talking about feeling like you're still making a contribution to the world, to your family, or even just your community or yourself, your own personal development. I'm not talking about a nine to five job. I'm talking about starting your own business with Neora, fitting it into the cracks and crevices of your life, having a ton of fun with other Neora brand partners, then you definitely want to take a look at this. Find the link in the show notes. This is DJ with Neora. So why then is it easier to change when we're younger, or so we think, <laughs> and so much more difficult as we age. Do you think some of that has to do with the fact that we're hanging on to the past? I don't necessarily know if it's about hanging on to the past as much as it is hanging on to the present. And I say that because, I mean, I crave change. I move furniture around. I change my look. I play different music now than I did because I, I dread stagnation. I have a fear of stagnation. However, as we change, the symbolic meaning of change may be what really stresses us out. For example, um, when my parents were in their 80s before they died, um, my stepmother, who was a great art collector, her house was full of it and full of great throw rugs. And my dad started having regular falls. And when I suggested to her, I think we have to really exit the throw rugs, which is number one in keeping your house safe as we age. She said, I am unwilling to give up the life I have. Ooh, ouch. Right. So she eventually did. We moved all those throw rugs. We changed the furniture so it was easy to get in and out of. I mean, we had to make changes to keep my dad safe. And eventually the changes were also to keep her safe. Right. The symbolic meaning of change is different as we are in the last quarter of our lives as opposed to the beginning of our lives when everything is new. So when everything is new, it doesn't even feel like a change. Right. It's exciting. That's right. It's exciting. So at this age, if I change something that means a lot to me, um, I have to really think a great deal about it and bring meaning to it so that it 
is is very enriching for me, but it doesn't come automatically. Yeah. So I know that um, there's a saying, and I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit. If you continue to do the same things you've always done, you'll continue to get the same things you've always gotten. And for some people, they feel okay with that. That's comforting. But to me, and to a lot of people out there, that's stagnation. Even if they don't realize that's really what it is, they will you know, get older and say, you know, like, I'm so disappointed in myself. I didn't get as much done. So how do we maintain being motivated and engaged as we get older? And especially some of the challenging things like social media, a lot of people as they get older, if they did not have social media or even a computer for that matter, when they were, you know, working and, and, learning and growing, it's very difficult for them to embrace that. And I I do have experience with peers of mine who uh, refuse to get a smartphone, do not know how to text, don't want to even learn. And the only thing that motivated them is I said, well, how are you going to talk to your grandkids? And I'm going to kind of go back to what you said about the kids. If you keep doing what you did, you'll keep getting what you got. I don't know if that's true anymore. It's true in the short run, but the world has changed so much and it's changing so fast that how we were and the way it was may render us unable to deal with the world as it is today. Or as it will be tomorrow. That's right. So I think that there is great value in having a multi-generational social network Yes. Meaning from people older than you are, people younger than you are, people who grew up long past when you were in college or high school or even 50. I mean, I'm 75. So I'm meeting kids and professionals who were born 30 years ago when we started our company. Yeah. And so their world, they they were born into a world that I had to learn to adapt to and understanding that our lives will be richer if, if we live in the world, the entire world (laughs) as it is for our entire life. I mean, we are now, we produce the care channel, which is the only 24 hour relaxation channel. And some of our viewers may have seen it in their hospitals if they've been It's a complete nature channel, nature and music. And when we started it in 92, VHS tape, that's all we had. Yes. And the highest quality video was high eight. Well, now it's four to eight K and it's all digital. And we had to re produce all of the content several times as the formats changed. Right. And every time it changed, it was for the better. Even how I play the harp, I play an electroacoustic harp. And although I started amplifying in 73, which was heresy to a classical harpist, um, now it's required if I want to record, if I'm playing in a venue bigger than my living room, the acoustic harp, which was really born into chamber music in the 19th century, won't deliver what I need to deliver for my audience. So I'm going to suggest for those who are very reluctant to deal with technology, find a friend who's within your cohort, not a teenager, not a 20-year-old, Maybe someone who's 50 or 60 who who's really engaged in the technology because they'll have more patience with you and ask them to show you what it, how much do you need to know in order to be engaged with your kids and siblings who are very grandchildren far and great grandchildren. <laughs> That's right, because the only way they're communicating is through text. Right. And Facebook is about done. The kids use Instagram. um, Or TikTok. Or TikTok. Or or some of the others that I haven't even figured out yet. (laughs) Thank you that you don't have to know all of it, but it's a communication tool 
that allow even you and I are so far from each other during the entire pandemic. My family started a weekly uh, Zoom call on Sundays. We're still doing it. My sister lives in Israel and we're all here and we feel totally connected. So as we get older, the feeling of being far away or distance, we have the technology to keep us as close as if we were just next door. Right. Now, listeners, did I not tell you that you could listen to her forever? But (laughs) our time has gone. And I have to say that she is so right. You, as you get older, have a choice. You can live in your small little world and keep everything as much as possible the same, or you can embrace change and grow and thrive and make the world feel smaller instead of bigger. I hope that you can find at least one thing that you've learned in this podcast to take with you and put into action right away. Until next time, this is your host, DJ Horton with Advantages to Aging. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Debbie. Do you think one of the biggest advantages to aging is all the knowledge we gain along the way? Me too. What did you learn today? Share with me in my Facebook group with the same name as this podcast, Advantages to Aging. Now hit subscribe so you don't miss all the tips to come in future episodes.